when you have a landmine which is maybe about that size, you know, and it's amazing how much how much damage that can do, and especially especially to young people, and uh, and it's 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 re very important that that we try to in some way in in some way find how how we can make sure that it doesn't happen again. We're talking about uh, a thousand a thousand years before the landmines can possibly ever be totally taken out of, out of our lives. I'd, I'd been to um, Cambodia. I got a very, very um, unique insight into the horrible thing of mines that implode and, and, and take, light, take limbs from children. And uh, I, I thought for a long time, you know, that I must, if I, if I possibly could, could I maybe change uh, everybody's attitude. So Bobby Charlton visited some conflict areas where uh, he saw casualties from, from landmines in, in Southeast Asia especially. Um, and when he came back to Manchester, he, um, he thought, well, there are lots of clever people in Manchester, perhaps they can find a better way to solve it. And our, our first reaction was, yes, but we know there's lots of clever people worked on this problem already. Why, you know, why should we be able to contribute? Um, however, Sir Bobby's very persuasive, so we started working on the problem and we realised that we actually had um, some techniques that, that would be useful, we'd developed from uh, other problems. So there are literally millions of anti-personnel mines in the ground, in places where people need to grow food or need to walk to the nearest well or uh, simply go about their daily business, shelter under a tree from the sun. And these are uh, left over from, from conflicts the mines are plastic, generally. They have a very small amount of metal, typically a tiny firing pin and a metal percussion cap. So using an ordinary metal detector that, that simply beeps when it's over a mine, you can find all the small bits of metal in the ground. Most of those bits of metal are not a mine. A piece of tin can, a bit of a bullet, shrapnel. Currently, all those bits of metal have to be dug out of the ground to declare it safe. And this process will take of the order of hundreds of years before people can get their land back in, in a way that's safe. So, in a way, our challenge is not so much to find mines, but to detect that something's not a mine. So, having found a small piece of metal, if it's definitely not a mine, then it can be cleared more quickly. And so the biggest impact we can have is, is something that can characterize the objects that, that are found. So for example, we have a system where instead of having one metal detector head with coils in that beeps when it's over metal, we use lots of coils. And for making lots of measurements and doing some mathematics, we can locate multiple metal objects and to some extent characterize them. Interestingly, some of the main mathematics describing the way that metal detectors work hadn't been done when we started. It was surprising because metal detectors have been around for a very long time. Um, so that's surprisingly difficult and long-term work. We now have the theory that we need for metal detectors. I mean, when Bobby came back from one of his trips, specifically, I remember it to this day, he said, do you know, Johnny said, they put in the landmines under the trees where the people and the kids sit, or they put it on the football pitches where they play. They go to under the trees because it's a tropical country and it rains and it rains very heavily, and they they go under the they go under the trees uh, for shelter. And the people who who design and and who explode landmines are very much aware of this. Can you can you imagine it? It's it's horrific. They can't even go under a tree without their, being, their, their legs being blown off or whatever. The other thing we're looking at is ground penetrating radar. It's, it's like radar, but it shines into the ground and objects reflect the radar back. Instead of just having one thing that just gets an echo, again, we can have multiple sensors. So we have a lot of data that's, that's coupled together and untangling that to make a picture of the underground structures is the sort of thing we want to do. 
So that, that's the main sort of focus of our technological approach and part of that's funded by Find a Better Way and it also builds on technologies that we've developed for completely different problems. For example, airport security screening. There are very many different ground conditions in which mines might be found and it's, it's possible we, we might come up with different solutions for them. For example, in, in a, a rice paddy field, it's likely to be quite damp and that, that means conductive from the point of view of electromagnetics. And so it's more challenging to get microwaves, radar, through conducting ground. Whereas in an arid climate, the, the problems will be different. There's also different types of contamination. So, um, you know, it's not a uniform, nice soil. It has rocks, tree roots, rubbish, bits of things left over from a battle. Um, so the, the separating the clutter from the signal is, is a very big problem. We know that we're not going to, to resolve the problem in one easy move. What we do know, we are going to improve it in steps. We're not seeking the blue horizon. We are seeking to improve the technology and the way things work today and to improve it in the years ahead. So we're taking it in what we call early wins. Uh, there must be a better way of doing something, of getting, of getting, getting the mines out of the ground. There must be a better way.